Good morning. It's the flip-flop congregation. That's awesome. Where are your flip-flops? Uh, beautiful day. Rain has, has ceased. I am going, uh, you may not realize this, but during July and August, I leave here fairly quickly for a good reason. I, it's not because I don't like you, I do. But most Sundays I'm preaching at Brick Chapel, which is a couple miles out of town, and their, their service is at 10.30. So if, if you want to sleep in or want to plan B, that's a good option. And then today I have Mark Shepherd is preaching there for me so that I could go over to Daily Ridge, which is another small Presbyterian church. It's actually uh, in the town of Norwood or Potsdam, but it's back on in the country. They have, uh, the only heat they have is wood heat. They have kerosene lanterns that hang from the ceiling. And uh, some time ago, my predecessor two back um, helped build a little fellowship hall which they call the piecemeal palace and so in order to get electricity to the church they run an extension cord through the window across the lawn and then up into the church uh, so that's that's a neat thing and i'll be there this uh, after this service today i just saw michelle walk in i don't know if you were quite aware of it but Last Sunday, I made an announcement, and I want to say hi to everybody on the stream. We made an announcement about the, the pencils that we're collecting for the Church and Community Backpack Program, and we were, I don't know, 600 short or something like that, and, and I, I let people know that. And then I gave a sermon about manifesting things in our lives, and there was a bunch of us just before the service started. There, we left and on the, there was nothing on the table other than a few boxes of pencils in the basket. And then when we left church, there was this big box of pencils that had like 844 pencils in the box that magically, mystically manifested. And so not only did, did that send us over the top, but I see that there's another package that came in the mail. There's some more pencils there. So I think 
without I, we're pushing about 2,000 pencils is what I'm saying of the 1,200 that we needed to get and I know Michelle is going to take them uh, this week so that's very exciting and I'm sure that they can stockpile whatever extra pencils so good for us hey right yeah. yay today is noisy can offering are there any kids that want to do that go ahead we need I don't have any ch it's getting it's we're gonna have to get a handheld scanner to go on our phone for these kids no one carries money anymore you got a little you got a little tink, tink, tinkle tinkle song yeah come on Uh, <laughs> nicely done nicely done it's an important thing with rituals is to keep doing them so it's nice to have uh, Jim's mom here it's nice to have Dave Croft back I my uh, neighbor on Trout Lake and uh, good to have you here and good to have all the kids here Jane had a birthday last week and her sister uh, Evelyn has a birthday this past week and so one and what'd you say 19 one in 19, there's a spread for you, huh? Ah! So, ah! So, uh, uh oh. The Decay Bolton family's coming in. And Christy, was your birthday this past Saturday or is it this week? It was Friday. So did your, did your folks make it up? Oh, that's great. And they had a good time? It must have been a hard week for you because you're sitting in the back pew. You've never done that. There's just. There, oh, no, no. Well, there's certain assumptions that get made for people that sit towards the back of the church, like, you know, Bob Duda. Enough said, right? So that, Linda Potter. There you go. All right. Let's stand and join with a responsive call to worship in the bulletin. Let's get this party started. The Word of God awaits us here. Come to worship. The Holy Spirit welcomes us gathered to pray. Come to be renewed in the Spirit of Christ. God is waiting to offer us a new life of freedom. Plunge into soul-refreshing waters that invigorate. Offer to one another the bread of life. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for each pilgrim here today and on the stream. We ask that you fill us with your peace and grace. We ask that your spirit descend upon this church, this community, and our world, that you may infuse us with hope and purpose and meaning. Be with us in this time of worship. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first hymn is number 17. Sing praise to God, you heavens. We're in the purple hymnal today.
Turning now to the bulletin, I invite you to join with me and your neighbors in the hard work of the faith. Let us pray this aloud together as one, the unison prayer of confession. Persistent creator, patient teacher, persuasive spirit, you are tireless in speaking to us, but we find it easy to close our minds, to refuse to hear what would require growth and painful change to reject the truth because it is inconvenient. Forgive deliberate denseness of mind, fearful resistance to change, stubborn insistence that our way is the best way. Continue your speaking until we hear. Try new parables on us until we think and understand. Argue with us until we do your will. What else will your love in Christ allow you to do? Amen. Hear the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. As God's own people, be merciful in action, kindly in heart, humble in spirit. Always ready to forgive as freely as God has forgiven us. And above everything else, let us be loving and never forget to be thankful for what God has done for us. Know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Amen. We'll affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. It's on the, in the inside cover of any hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. God is forgiving us in Christ. Let us be forgiving of each other and ourselves. The peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Please be seated. Thank you for your emphatic response. Today's scripture reading is from Matthew. It's a little long. Hang in there. Hear the word of the Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as she sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up, other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky soil, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while, and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, 
But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. Here ends the reading of the word. Thanks be to God. Fortunately for you, and unfortunately for me, this is my third attempt at today's sermon. While a fit and a start is not unusual, a third swing at the ball is almost unheard of, especially when I had completed a little over half of the sermon on that second try. This week, though, I had a rather ordinary event which sent me right back to the drawing board with eraser in hand. Now, to give you the context, last Sunday's sermon was about manifesting things in our lives through means which might be mystical, but more often than not are quite mundane. I told the story about how a, a straight shaft weed whacker manifested in my life just two days after deciding not to buy one. Now, the experience offered a lesson about our ability to manifest things, events, and people in our own lives, but how people are often quite resistant or reluctant to choose to do so. While mysticism may surely be involved in certain manifestations, the truth is it is the intention one has and the effort that one makes to manifest that matters most. It would seem that one parishioner in particular really took this lesson to heart. Following the worship service last week, Barb Brown approached me about the aforementioned straight shaft weed whacker, to which I attached a rather fierce metal tri-blade capable of cutting just about anything from grass to small saplings. And she asked if she might be able to borrow it, and I told her of course she could. Seems she has a good-sized patch of lawn which had been let go for too long, and your typical fishing line style weed whacker was now of little use as the growth had become too stocky. Stocky. The next day I texted Barb and asked just how big of an area she was talking about and so she sent a photo from her phone and approximate dimensions. I looked at the weather and at my work calendar and I texted a response saying that Linda, Linda and I would be there at her house at 9 a.m. Tuesday, this past Tuesday morning, and that while she and Linda visited with coffee and coffee cake, very gracious hostess, that I would weed whack the lawn, which is exactly what we did. Now, when I first got into ministry, it was clear that, at least for me, the job description would always include the caveat and other duties as assigned. Over the past 30 years, I have taken on any number of tasks for a parade of parishioners beyond the usual prayers, pastoral visits, and counseling one would normally expect from their minister. These have ranged from filling bird feeders, moving furniture and heavy objects, checking sump pumps, simple carpentry, driving lessons, providing transportation to medical appointments in the ER, loaning my car or motorcycle, watching kids, co-signing a loan one time, offering our home and our cottage, hosting holiday meals at the manse, providing food to any number of people, shoveling walks and clearing driveways, attending art openings, athletic events, plays and concerts, going grocery shopping, picking up prescriptions, unclogging drains, picture hanging, computer tech work, and of course, setting the correct date and time on any number of VCRs over the years. Once, I even was called to a prisoner's house to check their home for a ghost. That actually happened more than once, but it was the same person. You think I'm joking. 
No, it's true. In all those years, however, never once did I weed whack someone's lawn. That is until this past week. In spite of Barb's protestations, and there were many, come Tuesday morning, I loaded up my truck with both the bent and the straight shaft weed whackers. I had plenty of two-cycle gas, safety goggles, ear protectors, gloves, and Linda and I set off overland, because there's no straight way to get from there to here, to Barb's house on the river. With the hour drive there and back again, being the furthest I'd ever driven my truck. See, when you get, drive something that gets 10 miles to the gallon, you don't drive it very much. You actually save gas. <laughs> now, I did all this for two reasons. One had to do with Barb, but the other had to do with me. While prayer is certainly important, sometimes the best way to help a person is to actually do something tangible in their lives, which serves to lighten their load even just a little bit. You know, once that door gets cracked open, all kinds of possibilities flood in. Beyond the actual work done, whatever it may be, the kindness that we show to others provides a real boost of spirit and helps folks to realize that they don't walk alone through this world. The other reason I did the weed whacking is that never once in all my years that Barb has been part of our church, have I ever been to her house? Moreover, I had only the vaguest sense of where that house might be. While I may not have actually been inside the home of each person in our congregation, in the instance of almost every other parishioner, I can tell you where they live and, at the very least, have driven by their house, all except for Barb. Which, for me, has been a long-standing issue of the mildly nagging variety. Of course, there's very good reason for all of this, as Barb's house is on its way to exactly nowhere. <laughs> At least for me in my life. Beyond having long felt that I should make a trip out to Barb's house, the truth is I had very much wanted to do so, as I have found Barb to be one of the most hope-filled and joyous people in our church. She is a bright light who brings much good to the world and especially to our life together as a church family. Did I, as her minister, owe her a visit? Absolutely. That, however, is not the reason I found myself breaking a sweat Tuesday morning, weed whacking Barb's lawn, once with a metal bladed straight shaft, then again with the regular bent shaft and the fishing line weed whacker stuff, then raking it all up and removing all the clippings. The real reason I did this is because I wanted to come to know Barb in her life as a part a big part of coming to know any person is seeing where they live and later being able to picture them in their own space, surrounded by the things they love and the stuff that they do. Set back off the road at a beautiful spot on the St. Lawrence River below Morristown, Barb has this incredibly charming, cedar shake sided, sea coast evoking house that is, at the same time, airy and open, and yet cute and cozy and filled with a lifetime of living. While I certainly had a good measure of Barb prior to Tuesday, I now have a fuller and deeper understanding of who she is in her life. What a gift. Now today's scripture reading from Matthew 13, the parable of the sower, finds Jesus painting a picture of the challenges of discipleship and the challenge to the disciples in bringing the word of the kingdom, the gospel, to the world, i.e. the seed. Now here in this illustration, Jesus warns of seed sown on the path of hard hearts, which is easily snatched away by evil, the seed sown on rocky ground, which withers as it fails to take root, after an initial flourish. 
and seed sown among thorns, which is choked by the cares of the world and the lure of wealth. However, when the seeds of the gospel are sown in good soil within those who hear and understand the word, then such seed bears fruit in varying amounts of yield. Blah, blah, blah. Which is how I heard it, when I first read it anyway. And which is why I ended up tossing not just my first crack at today's sermon, but a second half-finished sermon as well. Totally uninspired attempts to check the box, which, as I said at the start, is fortunate for you. Unfortunately for me, after 30 years of preaching, this is more and more the case. With the lectionary cycling through every three years, it means that, generally speaking, I am now preaching on any given passage for the tenth time. Even worse, if you are any kind of regular churchgoer of a certain age, you have probably heard a sermon based on the same passage 15 or even 20 times. I mean, really, enough is enough. What more needs to be said? Blah, blah, blah. All of which starts me to wondering if perhaps it is the case that there is some secret contract between preacher and churchgoer, one that I'm only now catching on to, that monotony, repetition, and a lack of inspiration are givens to be expected and more or less okay so long as you keep the sermon short. There's only one guy who gives up the secret, the blabbermouth over here. So here, you know, just, just, just as is the case with spinach in one's teeth, or one's fly being open, or egg yolk in one's beard, or toilet paper stuck to one's shoe, just, just pull me aside and quietly let me know that I have a kick me sign taped to my pulpit robe. I mean, if it's okay to just walk a dog every Sunday, just tell me. That's fine by me. That said, and regardless if such a secret contract exists, the fact of the matter is, I do not write sermons for you. I do so for myself, as the spiritual journey is for me an imperative. Though it requires a good bit of time, effort, and more patience than you would imagine, I have found that if I can just hang in there long enough with any particular passage, usually, usually, some new and larger pearl of wisdom eventually emerges, even from an old chestnut, like the one we have before us today, the parable of the sower. Now, while I have spent countless hours and years pondering the five varieties of places that the seeds of the gospel may be sown, the exposed path, the rocky place with no depth of soil, the scorched place with no deep roots, the thorny place which choke out the seed, and finally the good soil, where the gospel might grow, flourish, and yield different measures of fruit. It never dawned on me until I got to weed whacking Barb's lawn that these places represent our very lives. Ironically, such a realization had little to do with the actual weeds I just happened to be whacking, and everything to do with Barb manifesting me so that I would come and understand her in the context of her own home, in her own space, and in her own life. Usually when we hear the parable of the sower, we start by considering the seed and where it gets sown. This time around, thanks to Barb, I started with a consideration of the harvest and the magnitude of fruit that the good news of the gospel can bring to one's life, and then I work backwards to the seed. I recognize that at various points in her life, and I'm sure this is the case with many, if not all of you, I hope, that at various points in her life, Bart had to either endure or avoid altogether the cares of the world, the trappings of wealth, troubles and persecutions, and a lack of depth of soil in which to root oneself. That day, looking at Barb's physical space, 
and how she made it her own home, I realized that in her the joy of the gospel had not only survived but thrived. Not just to her benefit, but to the benefit of all those around her, especially our church. As we all know, and to which each of us can testify, the life of faith is not without temptations and troubles and anguish. The trick is hearing, seeing, and understanding the joy of the gospel that exists all around us all the time and how it has already been sown deep within our hearts such that our lives might bear, yield, and share a harvest of joy in this world and with this world. Let anyone with ears listen. And the people will have heard to say, Amen. if any of you are getting ideas out there, my weed whacking days are over. That was it. I got, you get one sermon out of it and we move on to something else. Plumbing, I don't know. Let's uh, sing We Gather Together. It's a, it's a Thanksgiving song, but it's a harvest song. 336, please stand. Please be seated. I am uh, aware of little streams that happen, uh, and I'm, I'm picking up the word free and freedom a couple times now in our hymns, and that wasn't necessarily my intention, but I think it's a good thing to kind of latch on to as a bonus. Freedom. You have the freedom to do what you want and not do what you don't want. It's kind of nice to see all you folks here. I appreciate that. Yes, Ellen. Thank you. We have a bunch of folks on the stream. Carolyn O'Connor, the Bill and Karen Parker, Betty Phillips, Jane Cable. I got your I got your shells on and I I can't I know you gave them to me and I can't remember if there was a particular story with them and people keep asking me. So if there's a story, maybe you could text it or type it here in the in the chat, and if there isn't a story, just make something up that's really cool. <laughs> Bar, uh, Betsy Robinson says good morning, and Sean and Lachlan and Kristen are on. Uh, snow, beller, snow, belt, snow blower belt repairs too. I guess I did that. I forgot. It's getting to be a big deal now. All right. Uh, time to share joys and concerns. Did you do anything fun this week? Come on. All right, Martha. You know, I saw the thing. That's a great, I mean, the, like the, yes, I saw the picture. You know, uh-oh. Oh, put it right in the offering plate. No, they don't even need to go that far. You 
can't make this stuff up. Yeah. And I love the fact that you waited until joys and concerns to say that. I mean, because I'm sure she was just sweating it out. Couldn't, yes, go ahead. That's right. I, I realized that we didn't have a microphone, so for the virtue of the people at home, I want to tell them that Martha found $50 sitting on the path over here and waited until Joys and Concerns to announce she had found it. And of course, Bonnie had lost the $50, and so she was delighted to get it back. So that's what all the, the hoo-ha was about. Yes. I just have a joy. Um, my lawn looks wonderful. <laughs> I, one of the things, uh, anyone else? Yes, Michelle. Isn't that a wonderful example yes. of the Word of God? What was lost is found. Restoration. Jesus brings restoration. Michelle's preaching next week. <laughs> it's also kind of interesting that it was found on the path, you know, it was sown on the path, and that someone came and snatched it away. You can go any number of places. So I wanted to say in the sermon, but I didn't necessarily find an opening, that um, one of the things I learned about Barb is that she's going to be going to Scotland in a couple of weeks with a friend of hers, and she's very excited about it. And Barb's a little old school, and she had this sheet of paper with a map of Scotland on it, and all the places that she was going to go or was planning to go, and in the order in which she's going to do them in with different... Do you remember Family Circus? And every once in a while, they'd have the kid with the dotted line all over the neighborhood. That's what's going on. There, there wasn't a straight line in that whole thing, and I, I looked at it, and I said, there's no way I'm just... It's like an hour to try to figure this out. I said, that's great, Barb. So... So have a great time meandering over hill and dale, Bray in Scotland. Anything else? Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we give you thanks this day for the ability to manifest things and people and miracles and goodness in our lives, for the kindness of strangers, for the, the truth that gets put in front of us all the time, literally. We only have the ears to listen, the eyes to see, and the understanding to know. Today we lift up in prayer Cindy for healing and Susan and Phil. We ask comfort for Luann and Theresa. Today we uh, lift up in prayer a friend of my daughter Nicole, her Kim Hoffman, who had a baby boy Fox and uh, dad Ross and prayers for them, baby and mom and family doing well. Also ask healing for those that are struggling with medical issues. We remember in prayer Galen Pletcher and Helen as Galen is home now and adjusting to that. Prayers for Judy Gibson facing some health challenges. For Bob Fraser who is doing rehab at the nursing home. For Wayne Miller also there doing rehab. For Nick Skelsey at the nursing home. Prayers for Vern and our villa as he continues to heal and they enjoy their summer, be with Bill Webb. Prayers for Krista. Prayers for the Parkers, for Eric, uh, Mark Erickson. We pray for the Brown family and the Bassford Rody family. Pray for Joss Holbrook, for Rita Ostrander, for Colleen Grant, Janet Favreau, for Jody Upton. We pray for all those who are ill or lonely or in nursing homes or hungry. We pray for those serving our nation and their families in support of them. We ask that you be with the work of this church, that we may able to celebrate the joys of the gospel made manifest in our own lives. We ask these things in the name of your Son who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Creator Christ and Holy Ghost. Please be seated. Jane says, the shell uh, lay, right? Isn't that how you say that? Was given to me at my high school graduation, which might have been a year or two ago. And I re-gifted it with much aloha to Kahu, that's the Hawaiian word for pastor or minister, Kahu Michael Catanzaro. So glad to see it as being worn and enjoyed. Now that's a great story, right? It sounds like it's the real story, too, even better. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm touched. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, our, what are we doing next? We're singing. When the Lord redeems the very least. Bob and I are doing some different things this summer. I hope it's okay with you. Number 852, please stand. As you go from this place today, may you be filled with peace and hope, and may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you, be gracious to you, and give you peace. Amen.
Please be seated for the postlude. Have a great week. Come to coffee hour. <laughs>